What's going on YouTube? In this video, we're gonna answer the question, how fast is the Koenigsegg Yesco? We're gonna look at specs of the Yesco, look at the two versions, compare them, and of course, run some quarter mile drag races. If you don't know what Koenigsegg is, it's a Swedish hypercar company that makes really expensive, really fast cars. The Yesco is one of their newest models with over 1600 horsepower and a claimed 300 plus mile an hour top speed. It's gonna come in two versions, a low drag version and a high downforce high drag version. To illustrate the differences, let's hop into a side-by-side -side spec comparison. On my screen here, you can see the spec comparison side by side. So on the left is the absolute, on the right is the standard version with the huge rear wing. Both of these cars make 1600 horsepower on E85. And if you don't have access to E85, you have to settle for 1200 horsepower on pump gas. What a shame. So these versions have the same engine and transmission. They'll have a nine speed, what Koenigsegg calls a light speed transmission. And both are rear wheel drive. So you're talking about 1600 horsepower going to the rear wheels. We'll see how this gets interesting later. Their weight is pretty similar, although the absolute weighs a little bit less at 3064 pounds. Where things get really different is the aerodynamics. So like I mentioned earlier, the Absolute is a low drag version meant for top speed runs. It has a drag coefficient of 0.278, which is incredibly low for an internal combustion engine car. Koenigsegg hasn't released an official coefficient of drag for the high downforce version. So I've estimated it at 0.45. I arrived at that number by looking at the Koenigsegg 1 to 1, which is also a really high downforce car that they make. It has a coefficient of drag of 0.45 to 0.5, depending on the aero setup. So let's start by looking at the theoretical top speed of these two versions. I'm not going to do a deep dive into the equations on your screen here. I do that in a separate video. I'll put a link above where I talk about how fast cars can get and if they can break the 400 mile an hour barrier. But I will do a quick run through on how much power these two variants will need to reach 300 miles an hour. So super quick, the two equations that act on the car are rolling resistance and air resistance. So using the equations above, if you just run through the math real quick, I'll put it on the screen, but you need 772 kilowatts to overcome air resistance, 30 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance, and that brings the total power needed to reach 300 miles an hour, 802 kilowatts or 1,000 76 horsepower. Now for the standard version, when we add all that downforce and increase the drag a lot, this number is going to jump up really quickly. So using the same equations and running through the numbers, we see that we need 1,250 kilowatts to overcome air resistance and 56 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance. That brings the total power needed to 1,306 kilowatts or 1,751 horsepower. So that tells you since these cars are rated for 1,600 horsepower, the high downforce version is not going to reach anywhere near 300 miles an hour. Also, these figures are calculated as if the car would have 100% drivetrain efficiency, which it doesn't. In the real world, these cars will likely have 85 to 90% drivetrain efficiency. That would bring the horsepower number even higher. So for the Yesco downforce version, you would need close to 2000 horsepower to go 300 miles an hour. Okay, I hope that wasn't too boring, but enough detail to give you an explanation on the top speeds. Now we're gonna hop over to a drag race simulator, which uses the exact same equations that I put on the screen here. And we're gonna do some heads up drag races. We're gonna do zero to 60 quarter mile runs, 60 to 130 runs, top speed runs and we're going to see how different these cars are despite very similar specs. I've gone ahead and set up a quarter mile drag race on a street surface. So we have the absolute on top, the standard version on bottom, and we can see they're both struggling for traction a lot. So if we actually pause it here at the five second mark, we can see that both cars are going over hundred miles an hour, but the Yesco standard is going a lot faster and is pulling more G's. So it has a higher acceleration because it has so much more downforce, so it's getting more grip. But both of these cars are struggling for traction at a, over 100 miles an hour. If we continue the race, we can see that the standard does pull on it in that midsection, but the absolute is actually pulling right at the end. So the absolute has a higher trap speed at 182, the Yesco standard at about 180. One thing I will say about these quarter mile times is they will be greatly affected by the surface they're on. So if this was on a prep drag strip or a really crappy road, these times will sway drastically. These times are based on optimal road conditions. So assuming you could do 20 or 30 launches, this would be the rough estimate quarter mile you would see. One really interesting point here is the 60 to 130 time. So in the absolute, it's almost mid three seconds where the standard is almost getting below three seconds. And the reason for this again is that huge downforce difference. So the standard's able to put down way more power in those mid range speeds because it has much more grip. And so even though the coefficient of drag is higher, it's still much faster through that 60 to 130 range. Another ridiculous thing I wanna point out is based on the simulator's calculations, the Yesco Absolute is spinning tires all the way through six gear and six gear is going through 150 miles an hour. So this car will not be getting all of its power down to the ground until it hits seventh gear, which is pretty mind boggling. So I just demonstrated the effects of downforce in those mid-range speeds, 60 to 130, 150 miles an hour. It gets a ton more grip, so it's able to accelerate a lot faster. But what happens when you get to those higher speeds? Let's start a rolling race from 100 miles an hour with the two cars and let's see what happens. So just like before, we have the absolute on top, the standard on bottom. 
We can see the standard gets the jump because it's getting a bit more traction, putting power down better. And then eventually the absolute passes it. So once we get into those top speeds, there's way less drag on the absolute. And we can see here towards the end of this mile race, when the standard shifts into ninth gear, it's only pulling 0.03 G. So it's barely accelerating at this point, And it's only doing 245 miles an hour only in quotes because these cars are ridiculous, obviously. But the Yesco Absolute is doing 275 miles an hour and it's still pulling almost 0.2 Gs. So it still has a ton more room to accelerate. And finally, because I said I'd answer the question how fast these cars are, we're going to do a top speed run. So of course the Absolute's on top. The cars are really small because this is a five mile drag strip. So it's still pulling. It's going over 300 miles an hour. The standard has topped out at right about 250 miles an hour. It might hit 251. The Absolute is topping out at 309 miles an hour. So there you go. It's gonna go over 300 miles an hour for sure. It might be able to go a little bit faster based on the efficiency of the drivetrain, we'll see. If you wanna test these cars out in the drag race simulator for yourself, you can at motormatchup.com. It's completely free to use. After doing the analysis, it makes me wonder why anyone would want the absolute version over the standard version. It's gonna spin tires to 150 miles an hour and it's not even gonna be able to put all of its power down in realistic driving speeds. But you can brag to your friends and say it goes over 300 miles an hour. I don't know. It, it It's interesting because at this level, these cars are basically just collector pieces for the most part. Most of them don't get driven. It's cool, but it's also sad at the same time. Anyways, I'm ranting at this point. That's a topic for a different video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.